sports is contested space. You look at Jack Johnson, and Jack Johnson was somebody who was never shy about telling people that they could kiss his ass. It becomes very interesting when Joe Lewis fights uh, Hitler's favorite boxer, Max Schmeling, in 1938. Dr. Martin Luther King, he called Jackie Robinson a sit-inner before sit-ins, a freedom rider before freedom rides. And so then you get this whole period where the best athletes in the United States are African-American and they're political. And that to me speaks to the power of sport because it forces people to confront ideas and situations that they would otherwise be mentally segregated from. Everybody has a stake in understanding racism and how it operates in our society and has a stake in understanding how race and sports intersect because our ability to understand it or not understand it is the difference between us being shackled or us being liberated. A lot of people who are going to be watching this um, are don't really care about sports mm -hmm. uh, or they're actually going to be quite hostile to, to, to sports or to the presence of you know sports in their lives. Uh, could you at the outset say why they should care about how we understand sports and the role that sports play in American society? Sure. I mean, I would start by saying that I think that sports is the closest thing to a national language that we have. I mean, the most wide-watched television program in the history of the United States is the Super Bowl. I mean, it's something that has created a common basis for people across lines of race, ethnicity, gender, sexuality, to actually have discussions about things that are happening in the country through sports. The reason to look at sports is it allows us to look at all kinds of other things. It's, it's an entree in to a discussion of, I mean, if you wanted to, you know, of militarism, of gender, we, we have, of labor relations, of, of all kinds of, of all kinds of issues. Um, and I'd like to focus on on race. Because in fact, we, we, you know, this, this society has a, a relatively limited way in which we can talk about race. Mm -hmm. And what I'm interested in is whether sports actually allow us mm -hmm. to have an expanded discussion. There's a narrative that is often used as a stand-in for a narrative about race and racism in the United States, which sort of goes something like this. It goes, segregation, integration, celebration. And at the end of celebration, you could have Michael Jordan, or you could have Barack Obama. You know, segregation, integration, celebration. But the real history of race and racism in this country reveals a history in this country that's far more complicated and doesn't conform to this very narrow ahistorical view that it's somehow this, you know, this stream of progress that's just going through time. And with each year that passes, things get more and more uh, accepting and, and we're become more and more of, of a colorblind society and all that. Nonsense. Oftentimes when we talk about race, we think race is about, you know, black people or Latinos. But in fact, what, what's always, you know, left unsaid that it's, it's always whiteness. It's about white people. And it's white identity that frames everything. It says something in and of itself that we can be critical of about this country, that oftentimes it takes athletes of a particular ethnicity to actually educate the rest of us, particularly white America, that these folks are not in fact invisible and that they are part of this country.